third circuit deals with the intellect. These are individuals that if you can't read it, if it hasn't been researched or there's some type of documentation from someone else who said it, then you don't believe it. Okay, this is the intellect and this is the avian. This is bird brain mentality. <laughs> okay? Now, you know, that is a very controlling mechanism. Okay, and this is where cocaine comes in. Okay, because these are the individuals that get super ego tripped and once they think they know something, you know, they can do whatever they want to, etc., and do this over and over again. Okay. But this deals with the intellect. If I can't read it, if it can't be proven to me, etc., by based on whatever I think proof is, that it doesn't exist. Third circuit. And many of us are caught into that. That's why we feel, for example, that we don't amount to much if we don't have whatever society says is important for you to be an educated person. Now, we know with the number of universities on this planet and with the problems on this planet that obviously having a degree means nothing. And it's amazing to me to see the number of Africans who still continue to barge their way into these institutions looking for answers when it's demonstrated every minute on CNN that they don't have them. Hmm. Okay, this is very, very awesome. So. When we understand that there are, there is information there, but you have to understand that there is a state of consciousness that one has to go to get the information, okay, and be able to come out with it with very little mental distortion. Because there's a big aspect of education that definitely deals with the implantation of social morals and norms for larger economic and political use at a later date. Now. What begins to get so interesting is that when we begin to move, and so I just want to say that third circuit is cerebellum. Fourth circuit now, we finally move into the occipital aspect of the brain. Finally, it's gotten in up here. That is fourth circuit, and fourth circuit deals with the emotions. This is the capacity to truly know kinesthetically what's happening anywhere in the world. Now, I think that the Western world is very, very interesting because Fourth Circuit is something that is condemned literally in this society for you to function on. Okay? I mean, Tina Turner talks about what love, what does love have to do with it? So she immediately tells you that your decision should be made from Third Circuit, not Fourth. Okay? Because you have to understand that Fourth Circuit deals directly with heart and knowingness and the center where the divine intelligence really resides. The Native American Indians can tell you that decisions should be made from the heart. After the brain gives you the information, the final decisions are made from the heart space. Never from the head, never from third circuit. But when we have individuals who now are incapable of expressing their true emotions, no camaraderie with others, <coughs> lack of intimacy, etc., they are truly locked out of fourth circuit. Now this is interesting, it's only one drug that they talk about that has a capacity to immediately move you into the fourth circuit, and that happens to be marijuana. However, the capacity for most people to actually get pure marijuana, because in this country, as much as they can, they douse it with something known as paraquat that immediately is toxic to the fourth circuit of the brain. Mm -hmm. So if you're dealing with that here, you are actually poisoning yourself and bringing about destruction because of what they hook on to the CHC, THC molecule. But the capacity to finally move into the fourth circuit where you do allow your feelings to be your guide as to who's who and what it is to do is very paramount to be able to access womanhood, manhood, kingship, queenship, and then finally God and God essence. So then moving into the fifth circuit deals with pure intuition. Intuition, if you look in the Webster's Dictionary, is pure knowingness. See, most of us have the uh, subconscious definition that was truly interestingly created that intuition is not a fact. It is a fact. It actually is a capacity to perceive past, present, and future at the same time. So when a person is able to intuit, that's the highest level of knowingness. Sixth circuit, when we actually move into temporal lobes, etc., where you have extrasensory hearing, you can hear anything, any place in the world, and in other dimensions. This is also where you can begin to see into other dimensions, etc. 
And then finally moving into the sixth circuit is activation of the frontal lobes, where depending upon your physiologic structure, you can access and utilize the entire electromagnetic spectrum as we know it. Now, it's very interesting that a distorted perception of what I'm talking to you about was elucidated in Lawnmower Man. Okay, any of you that actually saw Lawnmower Man, it's a very profound movie because actually what they did is externally <coughs> give this, what we call idiot savant, the neurotransmitters, <coughs> which means that they gave him the liquid aspect of the thoughts that are necessary to activate all of these different levels of the brain. Now, do understand what I'm saying because I'm telling you that every thought that you have is a chemical reality in your blood and therefore determines the entire quality, not only of your physical body, but of your entire life. Because we are now talking about electromagnetic attraction. So these neurotransmitters have been isolated for the last 20 years, and especially the ones on emotion. There is a particular neurotransmitter for joy, peace, harmony, love, the frequency of vibration of the atom, the content of the chemistry, the electromagnetic spectrum that it activates has all been identified in the literature. So therefore, it's understood that exposing a person to a particular sound, particular color, to a particular frequency of light actually will create neurotransmitters that will immediately put a person in a particular mindset of thought. So yes, depending upon your environment and who's manipulating it, you could be put into depression. You can actually be put into suicidal thoughts. You could actually be put into violent thoughts. But if you do not understand this, then you're just a victim and you will carry out these acts and then you will then have a sociological reason to be prosecuted and incarcerated. So they've been doing these kind of experiments for a very, very, very long time. And it's very interesting that most of it has been done on us. The prisons have been main human guinea pig areas and so have been the Head Start centers and the public schools. Because the first part of my book talked about the tens of thousands of children whose blood has been taken to actually elucidate the growth curves of the African child. So mothers who are so willing to take their children to these areas to get their blood drawn, to uh, have their children have substances introduced into their bodies that they have no idea what it is, okay, whatever it is that they allege, have no idea of the entity that they are actually feeding and what it might do to you later. See, it's very important that if you're going to be in a technological society, you must be technologically astute. Why don't you know what the Hubble telescope is? Why don't you know what it's looking at? Why don't you know what McDonnell aircraft is sending up every week? Why don't you know about the actual space station? Why don't you understand what's happening with the thoughts on the planet? Why don't you know that they already have maps of the United States where over one third of the land mass is gone? You must know that because you can't sit up and talk about I'm going to go to school next year for the next two years and get a master's degree when the city ain't going to even be here. What are you talking about? Okay, you have to understand what your purpose is and you have to understand that as long as you're committed to Earth, you've got to have something to stand on unless you've activated six or seven circuit where then you can fly. It doesn't matter. Okay, but if you haven't done that yet, then for you to then learn how to do that, you've got to then have a stable foundation and understand where those areas of stability and instability are. Now, that says then, what is the priority? Because when we actually talk about existence, that means that, of course, you have to have a place to stay and food to eat, but the next thing you have to have is information. And you have to make sure that what you do invest in as far as food and clothing is appropriate. Most of the clothing and the food that Africans buy is totally worthless and definitely clogged up their body. Now that's awesome when you understand that you wear clothes that are dangerous for you. Okay, but again, you have to know who you are. 